Let's talk about monocropping. Monocropping. It's pretty interesting. Also interesting, I've decided to pursue a low profile look to enhance my uh, aerodynamics. Okay, monocropping. Also called monoculture sometimes. It's this idea that you're going to grow the single crop year after year on the same soil. There are definitely good things. Monocropping has increased the world's accessibility and availability of foods, and it allows for specialization and increased efficiency. So if you have thousands of acres, and you just grow corn or wheat or soybeans or cows, uh, you know, that's cool because it means you're probably going to be way more efficient. You'll use less resources to get more food for everybody, which is pretty awesome. So monocropping on net has been a beneficial thing for the world's globalized economy for agriculture, but it's also been a little bit terrifying. And here's why. Classic example, the Irish potato famine in the 1840s. Now, this kind of correlates really nicely to the um, U.S. immigration history because we see a lot of people in Northwestern Europe coming to the, to the United States in the 1840s. And as the 1800s progress, the immigration streams move to Southern and Eastern Europe. But whatever, that's neither here nor there. In this case, the potato famine happens, and a lot of that's because this one crop, potatoes were heavily relied upon, and if they become compromised by disease or some sort of environmental event, hashtag climate change, then you could have a big problem. Another example would be bananas. In the 1950s, we relied on the Gross Michel banana, delicious, perhaps smaller and more tasty than the current banana, and because every banana on earth was that type of banana, they all became exposed and uh, diseased, and we had to switch to the Cavendish, which is the common banana that we eat today. The problem with the Cavendish is that it's also having uh, problems and exposure to disease all over the world. I believe in the Pacific Islands and perhaps in Central South America, whatever. <coughs> I'm okay. I'm not sick. So it's, it's my tea. It gives me the coughs, if you will. So the last thing I wanted to talk about with monoculture would be uh, cattle. So there are other ramifications too. For example, the Holstein cow, from my understanding, uh, was exposed to this illness called bovine LAD, which was an autoimmune issue, and a lot of cows were passing away before they reached six months old. You know, in this effort to make cows become larger, faster, and live in these conditions we're asking of our commercial cattle, we did create this genetic issue. And so, uh, for the most part, we identified the single bull that was responsible for this ailment, but we also have other issues too. Uh, we don't give cows the same amount of antibiotics we used to. We used to just blanket everybody with antibiotics, which is terrifying. If you just give everybody antibiotics, then the virus will eventually overcome this. Certain specimen and varieties of, of disease will overcome the, the antibiotic, and they'll become antibiotic resistant, which is pretty terrifying. That's actually happening um, with certain parasites too, like hookworms in greyhounds in Florida. They pretty much are totally resistant to all forms of medical treatment. A little bit terrifying, but still true. Uh, so but antibiotic resistance exists, which is why a lot of milk nowadays says that, you know, there's no, or the, the meat products in the grocery store say that they're not treated with random antibiotics. But, and that's true. That's a good thing. We do want to use them sparingly, you know, with low dosage and minimally acceptable doses to make it work. But, you know, uh, and then escalate as we need to. Otherwise, we create that resilience to antibiotics, which is terrifying. So monoculture, good, increased efficiency, increased scale. Uh, we get to make more money. That's cool in the global market because we're buying and selling across Earth. Remember, a lot of our produce actually comes from South America during the winter months. And then we switch to these uh, northern hemisphere regions like southern United States, Florida, during the summer months or spring and fall. Hope you guys have an awesome day, and uh, never forget, monoculture, good and bad.